Ah, uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jack Farmer, and this is Elite of the Week, the show where we take the wrestlers from AEW and we power rank them one through ten. And over the course of the year, every ranking is given a point. So if a wrestler's ranked number one, they get ten points, number two gets nine points, number three gets eight points, so on and so forth. And we're gonna tally up all these points at the end of the year. We are going to have a true blue elite of the year. Now, if you've been a fan for a while, you're probably saying to yourself, Jack, the format's always moving around and changing. And we're just trying to improve it. We're just trying to make it better. And I noticed that the engagement was better when I tried to get this up right after a Wednesday. So going forward, these shows are going to include Rampage from the previous week and Dynamite this week. Now, since we're starting this new format today, we're just talking about AEW Dynamite today. Just Grand Slam, that amazing show that we just got to see. That's all we're covering. That's going to be where we draw our top 10 wrestlers from. So thank you so much for joining us. We're about to get into it. But before we do, I do want to ask everyone to like, comment, share, subscribe, five-star reviews. I could use a couple five-star reviews on Apple's podcast, by the way. So hit me up with some of those. Hit me up with some comments there. That would be appreciated. Also, I just want to thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you're doing this, I appreciate you. I know you've got a lot of things on your mind. I know you've got a lot of stuff to do, but taking 10 minutes to watch this show does mean the world to me. I appreciate it, especially with all the other after shows out there. It's appreciated. I'm saying thank you. Thanks so much for being a part of the show. Let's get this show on the road, though. Let's talk about the wrestlers. Let's power rank them, and let's start. At number one, we have Britt Baker, DMD, main eventing AEW Dynamite Grand Slam in New York City, putting the world title on the line. And did she defend it? Boy, did she. Her and the dental assistants worked together to get the win over a red hot Ruby Soho coming in, looking like the heir apparent to the title. But no, Britt Baker hit that curb stomp and she showed that today she not only can wrestle, she not only can do the hardcore matches, she not only can talk, but she can slug it out with someone. As I said, she hit the curb stomp, wasn't enough, but that's when those dental assistants got involved. She took advantage of the chance, and she hit that locked jaw, retaining the championship, putting her at number one this week on Elite of the Week. At number two, though, to start the show, at number two, it's Brian Danielson, who came out the American Dragon first match out of WWE here on AW Dynamite. And he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the guy who's been running the show for about a year now. The impressive thing is, is when he got out there, no matter how crazy these fans seem to be, he stayed calm, he stayed focused, and he stayed on his game plan. And he put on an incredible matchup, surviving things like an avalanche snapdragon suplex, surviving things like a snapdragon suplex on the rampway, taking V-triggers, all sorts of things. He fought through it, and he didn't get the win. He got the draw, which I know stinks a little bit. But here's the thing when you go toe to toe with the world champion and you get to that time limit draw it makes all of us say buddy maybe you deserve a title shot and i think that that maybe you deserve a title shot is enough to put him all the way up at number two this week on elite of the week at number three we have kenny omega the aew heavyweight champion of the world now, he didn't put his title on the line, and that's one of the big reasons why he's ranked so high, even though he did get a draw. Right now, Brian Danielson, he had all this momentum coming in. I mean, I know it was his first match, but we were all excited. The fans were excited. There was adrenaline pumping. This was a match for Kenny Omega to lose. This was a match. This was a trap match, as we call it. But Kenny Omega brought everything that made him the man he is today. And he gave Brian Danielson all he could handle. But hey, he took everything Brian Danielson gave him as well. He survived things like that cattle mutilation, the yes kicks, and everything else Brian Danielson had. And he got the, the draw. But here's the thing. This is the thing. Now, the, Brian Danielson's higher because now he may get a shot at that world title. But Kenny Omega is still ranked high because, in a way, he's 
pushed off that title match now. He's pushed it away for a little bit at least, making it more of a sure thing for him to hold on to that title a little bit longer. And that is a good thing. And that puts him at number three on this week's Elite of the Week. At this week, our, we have a special category. We call it the best dressed. And this week, I'm going to give a shout out. And I almost gave it to Cody Rhodes because I don't care what you say. A cape that long deserves to be recognized. But I have to give the best dressed honors to FTR for those NWO inspired tights going up against Sting, a man who gained a lot of notoriety famously fighting the NWO back 20 years ago. And putting those tights on was a really cool way to pay homage to that and to also shout out the NWO. I'm NWO for life. And since I'm still alive, I guess I'm still NWO. Too sweet. Next up, we've got Malachi Black. He got into a rematch with the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. And this one was a lot tougher than the last one he was in. Cody Rhodes smartly went after his legs, which is what he uses primarily to fight with those kicks. But Malachi Black was able to think on his feet keep things going, and when the ref was distracted, use that black mist to get the win over Cody Rhodes. Now he's clean swept the Nightmare family. Every single one of them. Cody, he's beaten twice now. What's next for Malachi Black? I don't know, but this guy has shown that he deserves to be a featured player in the title picture very, very soon. Speaking of title pictures, at number five, we have Sting and Darby Allen in a tag team match against FTR. And FTR are two of the best in the business. The tag team, possibly the best in the business. A team that can go against anyone and beat anyone. Yet here I am talking to you about how Sting and Darby Allen found a way to get a win. What is technically kind of a ragtag team thrown together. Two guys that aren't tag team specialists working together found a way to come together and there was a real turning point here when Tolly Blanchard put the chair in the corner and Sting's veteran wherewithal knew to stop himself reverse the momentum send FTR crashing into the chair but then of course that beautiful scorpion death lock and the coffin drop to the outside for the win it has me thinking should Sting and Darby Allen get a tag team title shot you gotta let me know I think they may have earned it here tonight at number six, it's MJF. MJF coming off the loss to Jericho in strong fashion. Now, Brian Pillman Jr. is an upstart that has a lot of potential going forward. Probably going to be a huge star. And he was riding high on the emotion of all the mean things MJF said about him prior. But MJF showed why he is one of the winningest wrestlers in AEW history doing whatever it takes to get the win, even using Julia Hart as a shield at one point. But let's take all the shenanigans aside because he earned this win the right way as a great competitor, catching Brian Pillman Jr. off the top rope, locking him in the salt of the earth, and getting the wins back in the win column yet again. At number seven, it's Ruby Soho. She came into New York City as a person I think a lot of us wanted to see get the win. And though she came up short because the dental assistants got involved, at least that's what I call them, they got involved and distracted her. If not for that, this was Ruby Soho's match to win. She took it to Britt Baker. She took the fight. She took the curb stomp. She took everything and was asking for more. If this match happened again and we had a situation where maybe there was no shenanigans on the outside, I think Ruby Soho could get the win. So I think she's very likely to be getting a shot at that title again very, very soon. At number eight is Cody Rhodes. Again, came out with that beautiful cape that just took the entire entryway. I don't care what you say. I loved it. I thought it looked great. Those tights were amazing. Now, he came up with a loss, but let's face it. Malachi Black is on a tear right now. No one's stopping that guy. He hit his crossroads. Maybe would have hit it again if not for Arn Anderson bumping into him on the ring apron and some things not going his way, of course, getting spit in the face. Malachi Black spitting in his 
face with the black mist. Hey, a loss is a loss, but if you're going to lose, go down swinging, and that's what Cody Rhodes did today. At number nine, it's CM Punk. CM Punk, he didn't he didn't have a match today, but he came out and showed just how great he is on that microphone yet again. A lot of people are good on the microphone. He's comfortable on the microphone. CM Punk just seems comfortable every time he's out there being himself, doing what he does, showing us that, hey, maybe – an angry CM Punk is coming, warning us that we wouldn't like him when he's angry, even though I thought he was always a, a thing guy. But showing we may not like him when he's angry and that we may see him angry when he faces Will Hobbs on Rampage. Number 10, Brian Pillman Jr. also came up with a loss, but like I said, he was in the ring with one of the winningest competitors in all of AEW history. A guy with a need to win coming off of a big loss. This was a huge step up for Brian Pillman Jr., a hero on dark and elevation in the tag team division. This step to singles in the big leagues of Dynamite showed that he can swim with the Sharks. And if he keeps getting these opportun opportunities, he'll be a shark of his own very soon. That does it for us. That's the show. Real quick, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We go through them all. Now, next week, we will be after Dynamite, but it will also include Dyn Rampage from this week and Dynamite next week, so a, a bigger pool of people to choose from. But for now, that's it for the show. Let me know who you think should have been ranked 1 through 10 or just number 1. Let me know who I was missing, who I should have added, what I got wrong, what I got right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, obviously, to AEW for putting on a great show and having some great wrestlers for me to power rank. Thank you to everyone who watches, likes, comments, subscribes, shares, all that good stuff. I have to say it. Come on. That's part of making content today. You got to say like, comment, share, subscribe, five-star reviews. You got it. It's part of the rules. Is how it is. Let me know if you like this closer to Dynamite. Let me know if you like when the air date is, if you like the live nature, the unlive nature, all those different things. Uh, we will be back next week. And until then, as always, folks, do your best and be yourself.